Hello everyone, it's Melinda. Today we're going to be looking at quartz. Um, clear quartz, not always. <laughs> You'll see I do have some in here that are uh, a little bit more on the milky side or rose side or smoky side. Um, but I thought I would separate uh, quartz and my clear quartz into a video and then keep all of my quartz points and other varieties of quartz for different videos. Um, so it is a bit of a mix here, but that makes it, you know, that much more interesting. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'll start by showing you, um, I think, some of my uh, quartz specimens from a rose quartz quarry uh, that we have here in Quadaville, Ontario. Uh, these specimens, you might see a slight tinge of pink in them, um, but compared to the true uh, rose quartz material uh, from that location, this is more of a, a clear quartz, so I do keep it in my clear quartz uh, collection. Um, however, I guess it, it's not technically considered pure quartz because it does have that slight uh, tinge of pink color start showing you. Here's my big one. And things may crumble. These are very raw for the most part, so uh, that's okay if a couple <laughs> little pieces crumble off. Isn't that gorgeous? I don't know if the video shows it off, but some areas are incredibly translucent and very, very glossy. This one's a big, heavy one. There we are. Very, very translucent. And this is from that same location. Uh, so quartz is a hard crystalline mineral uh, composed of silicon and oxygen atoms. Uh, it's the second most abundant mineral in the Earth's uh, continental crust. Uh, just behind feldspar. Feldspar is the most common mineral that we have, and then quartz would be second. Cool, right? <laughs> Here's another one with some little rainbows in it, and that's just due to its structure and how it reflects the light. Isn't that cool? Also very translucent. This location really you know, just has gorgeous specimens of quartz. <clears throat> so there are many different varieties of quartz, several of which are semi-precious gemstones. Um, since antiquity, uh, varieties of quartz have been the most commonly used minerals in the making of jewelry uh, and uh, hard stone carvings, especially in Eurasia. There we go. Lovely little rainbows in there. It's a great piece. There we go. This little one is quite cute. I'm going to keep it in its container for now. Just because it's a lot of the same, so no point <laughs> taking it out. It's just a cute little translucent specimen. <clears throat> Another small one. There we go. And I love when you can see little rainbows inside. That's just so fun. Absolutely gorgeous. And this one from the same location is not only slightly pink, slightly rose, it also is slightly smoky. So this one is certainly not a, a true clear quartz, a, a true pure quartz. It does contain some other elements that is making it both a little pink and a little smoky, but not enough so to uh, make it into my other collections of rose quartz and smoky quartz. It's still quite, quite clear, even with those little touches of other colors. 
that's a great location for quartz. We do visit that one on um, one of my lovely tours. Okay. <clears throat> the next couple little pieces are from Bancroft, Ontario. And this one has a little bit of yellow iron staining on it, a little iron oxide. The location was known for having a lot of really beautiful tangerine quartz, um, some of which is in my collection. The iron oxides are just slight on this piece, so I didn't put it with the rest of my tangerine quartz. <laughs> but it's still lovely. And here's another. The next few that I'll show you are from Wanup, Ontario, outside of Sudbury, Ontario, which is actually my hometown. And I do run a tour uh, in Sudbury area, and we go to this location where there's a lot of really juicy, gorgeous quartz. So this is a clear quartz that's kind of verging on milky quartz. Not super, super transparent, but a little bit. <clears throat> So the ancient Greeks referred to quartz as krustalos, uh, derived from the ancient Greek kruos, meaning icy cold, because some philosophers at that time believed the mineral to be a form of supercooled ice. <laughs> Today, the term rock crystal is sometimes used as an alternative name for the purest form of quartz. Another from that area. This one is also a little tiny bit smoky, very, very, very slightly smoky, so not a pure uh, clear quartz. There is really gorgeous uh, smoky quartz from this location as well. Nice little rainbows. Love it. And since this one is quite similar, I'm not going to take it out, but I'll just give you a little look at it. And again, that's from the same uh, Wanup, Ontario location. <clears throat> so if we're going to discuss pure quartz, um, traditionally, again, that would be called uh, rock crystal or clear quartz. Um, and again, it would be completely colorless and transparent or translucent. Um, so I think the closest thing I would have is probably my crystal ball, although it does have... Um, it's completely clear, it's perfectly clear quartz, but it does have inclusions as uh, crystal balls should have. They should have natural inclusions if you're going to be using them um, for scrying. I love mine. <laughs> and I suppose I'm saying inclusion, but that's, you know, not really correct. What I mean is like the natural uh, little flaws in the formation, the little natural cracks and rainbows. And um, <clears throat> that's also a good indication that the crystal ball you're buying is truly natural. Um, as well as price, they can be quite pricey. If you're buying a large ball that is completely clear um, <laughs> and it's not many thousands of dollars, uh, then it's most likely glass. And that is a really good thing to know because uh, unfortunately a lot of sellers uh, will argue that their crystal balls are nat natural even though they're, they don't have a single speck inside of them and they're, you know, hundred two hundred dollars it's very very unlikely and also not what you want you don't want a perfectly you want these natural little uh, shapes and cracks and oh that's just that's absolutely what you want so yeah 
<laughs> so, um, back to the one up Ontario location. Um, there is beautiful black mica or biotite um, <clears throat> mixed in with the quartz there. So I'll start with this one, which is really quite juicy. It's probably also verging on a smoky quartz. Extremely glossy, very, very glossy. And then underneath, beautiful uh, biotite mica, probably in like schist formation on the underside of it. Isn't that lovely? And again, this is from a location that <clears throat> we visit on my tours in Sudbury. Here's another one. So the quartz is quite rough in this specimen. It's definitely not a beautiful clear quartz. Um, but I do find it interesting because of the black biotite mica inclusions and the teeny, teeny, tiny red garnets. Which I hope you can see. <laughs> They look like little smushed red dots. And if I didn't know the location and the, the fact that uh, garnets are a common find here, I wouldn't just assume a garnet. Although they certainly look like them, don't they? <laughs> Given the location, I suspect that's what they are. Gorgeous. I love that one. Also in the Sudbury area, um, but from a location that um, we we wouldn't visit. It's private property, property, so we wouldn't visit that one on my tour. But uh, it does have good examples of the type of quartz that you find in Sudbury. So I'll show you a couple of pieces. This one, verging more on a milky, but still slightly clear and does have red hematite or iron staining on it. Nice big chunk. <laughs> Sirens in the city, unfortunately, and every time it makes me sad. Oh, because I know someone's out there struggling, but that's life in the city. <laughs> there we go. And here's a nice thick one. Again, certainly not a pure uh, clear quartz, more of a, a milky quartz for sure. So, <clears throat> oftentimes you'll hear people say that chalcedony and quartz are kind of the same thing they're very similar and that's you know in a way that's very true because uh, chalcedony is a crypto crystalline form of silica consisting of fine intergrowths of both quartz and its monoclinic uh, polymorph mogonite so mogonite is kind of like a variety of quartz a uh, different slightly different version of quartz um, and together mogonite and quartz make up uh, chalcedony um, it's very important to note, uh, because people do get confused, and I've seen this unfortunately recently, um, I am saying Moganite, not Morganite. Um, unfortunately, sometimes people confuse the two and assume that Chalcedony is uh, Quartz and Morganite, which is a pink barrel. Uh, that's not true. Um, but, you know, it's a very easy mistake to make because the words are so similar. But I just want to make it clear that chalcedony is um, both quartz and moganite. Moganite. All right. So other opaque uh, gemstone varieties of quartz or mixed rocks that include quartz in them, uh, often including contrasting bands or patterns of color, are um, agate, carnelian, uh, onyx, heliotrope, um, and uh, jasper as well. And as far as 
uh, beautiful varieties of quartz. Um, you're probably familiar with citrine, and we've been talking about rose quartz. There's also amethyst, uh, smoky quartz, with which we've been talking about, and milky quartz as well, um, and there are others. Um, and the color differentiations arise from the presence of impurities. So like I said, there are like other elements at work inside of its structure uh, that's giving quartz this uh, slightly different color. Um, and as for milky quartz, uh, which is the most common variety of crystalline quartz, uh, the white color is caused by minute fluid inclusions of gas, liquid, or, or both trapped during the crystal formation, making it a, of little value really because it's, you know, it's not transparent. Um, so it can't be used for optical uh, purposes and it's not, you know, fantastic for a gemstone as, as well. Um, so oftentimes milky quartz is just left on the roadside, but like you can see, I do have a few specimens. I still <laughs> enjoy them, even though they're plentiful and not necessarily, you know, um, I don't know, clear and appealing in that way. I still enjoy uh, regular milky quartz as well. Um, so this specimen has a variety of mil minerals going on in it. Still very interesting. Um, I'm not sure what they all are, though I can guess that there's probably some feldspar in there. Uh, the, the pink, I'm assuming. I'm not really sure what else, to be honest. Um, but I can see very clearly that there is quartz involved. Maybe slightly more of a smoky quartz. And what I like about this piece is there's like this tiny little hole with some quartz crystals inside. I can see one shining inside that little cave there. And I just think that's so cool. It's a very rough looking rock, I'll grant you that, but I just like this tiny little cave here. <laughs> it doesn't take much, I like rocks. <laughs> As you can probably tell from all of my videos, I love them all. <laughs> Alright folks, so there's a video on quartz, uh, talking a little bit about clear quartz, milky quartz. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Oh, before I go, I think I forgot to show you this one. Uh, it's quartz with ironstone mixed in from an ironstone uh, mine from the early 1900s. And it does have a very, very slight magnetic pull to it. So that's really cool. Um, yeah. Neato. <laughs> All right. That's it for today, folks. I hope you'll join me for my next video. See you next time. Bye.